Okay guys, Rebo PT back with another video. Today we want to talk about EMG. This is a technology we use in a lot of our assessments, a lot of our treatments. So Brian's holding the unit. It's just like a little tiny, almost looks like the key fob for your car. And on the back there are four little metal pieces that when we put that on your skin, basically this is measuring the electrical activity that's going through the muscle fiber. So we already have two on Brian's hips, one on a hamstring, so we're going to put another on the hamstring. It's really easy, as you can see, we just literally stick it right onto the skin, and then that stays in place whenever we're doing any kind of activity. So, this is not a strength assessment. This is simply looking at the electrical signals going through the muscles. So, we're thinking about activation patterns, sequencing, ratios versus specific muscles. So we use this as an assessment tool, trying to figure out what are you using too much, not enough, but it can also give you a lot of information to optimize your patterning. We want the biggest muscle groups controlling the most important motions, say in the lower extremity, stopping knee valgus, we wanna make sure glute max is doing its fair share, we wanna decrease hamstring overactivation, over et cetera. This gives us an objective measure versus saying, well, this is what I feel. I feel hamstring, I feel glute. This gives us a really great assessment of that. Okay, cool. Okay, guys, so we have Brian here. He has four EMG sensors on, one on either glute and one on either hamstring. So let's look at a couple of the movements and activation patterns that we assess. So one, Brian's just gonna do a standing fire hydrant. So he's in a little bit of a hip hinge, a little bit of bend at the knee. And basically what we're looking at up here, this amplitude is looking at the, the electrical signal itself. So as you can see when Brian's moving the right femur, he's getting glute max activation, that's the red. Fairly low level hamstring, that's ideal. We want glute max doing a vast majority of motion at the hip. He's gonna switch. Basically with this what we can do is we can look at, is the sequence looking the way we like it to? glute max doing the most. We can also look at the amplitude to make sure that signal intensity is, is the way we like as well. We can do this at any, any superficial muscle in the body. Brian's gonna do a couple squats. This is another common one we look at. Number one is a diagnostic tool. Are you patterning the way that we prefer? And also as a training tool, when Brian's doing kettlebell swings, squats, Olympic lifts, we can assess when the load increases, does the pattern remain the same? So Brian's going through a little bit of our activation series. We like to do standing fire hydrants, a little bit of skate to kind of prime the glute max for most lower extremity activities. And then we're just looking at these various patterns that we see. So what this really comes down to is objectifying motor control. So when I explain motor control, I explain it um, thinking like shooting free throws in basketball. I shoot 10,000 free throws in basketball. I do the same thing every single time I come up to the line. And basically I ingrain that pattern. It's, it's, a, it's muscle memory, it's a habit. I don't have to think about how do I shoot my free throw. I just step up and I do it. In squatting, Olympic lifting, cycling, running, we want you to have these patterns ingrained to be using largest joint, largest muscle, more than these smaller muscle groups that we can think of, say adductors, short rotators, the hip, small musculature in the lower leg that we see a lot of overuse injury at. So not only is this a great way for us to assess your patterns, but we use it while we, while we treat as well.